All right. Hey, everyone. Welcome to day one of the Eat Clean 2018, Eat Clean 2018 challenge. Uh, I'm so excited to be here with you guys. And uh, this is day one. And now I can't reiterate this enough. I've said it several times in the group. I've sent out emails about it. I really, really don't want you guys to stress right now. Okay. I don't want you to feel like you have to be perfect on day one. We're, we are starting our learning process right now. This is video number one. This is going to talk about how 9010 started, why it works, how I came up with this concept, all this kind of stuff. But then we're going to talk later this afternoon about how the 9010 system actually works and what you need to do. Then we're going to talk about meal planning. We're going to talk about finding recipes. We even have a little fun uh, game for you guys that I think uh, will help. And then like think about like Sunday, Monday, you're going to start really hitting this strong. You're going to understand the concepts. You're going to understand all the stuff and you're going to start trying to do it. Okay. Even then I don't need you to be perfect. I don't need you to be, you know, hitting everything perfectly because I want you to think about this as a long-term thing. Okay. I want you to think about this as something that you can do forever. And so that kind of stuff takes time. I said in one of my posts, you know, just everything that is worth doing takes time to learn. It's not something you're going to master today. Okay. So just sit back, listen to the concepts, think about what we're talking about and be open to learning and then do your best from there. Okay. So today, by the way, I'm Ryan Chapman, if you didn't know, and um, I'm the creator of 9010 Nutrition and uh, I run these groups along with my friend Heidi who is our um, chef, basically. She um, comes up with all the recipes. We've got over 600, almost over 700, I think, in our website now, and she's the creator of probably 80 to 90% of those recipes. Um, and also Lisa Charters, who has helped us out with the community for a long time and uh, you know was, has been here since we started 9010 Nutrition, basically. And, um, and so we run these groups to show people these concepts and we enjoy them and love sharing this kind of stuff with you. Today, what I wanna share with you is just how it came about, okay? A, a lot of programs out there, I think, you know, people might look at me, you might know some, a, a little bit of my background from doing Ironmans and uh, marathons and, and all this kind of stuff, and you might say, oh, he's the creator of 9010 Nutrition, and you might think, okay, here's someone who's got it all down, they uh, probably were fairly fit all their lives, they, uh, you know, have eaten, healthy since they were a kid and they're going to go tell me how to eat healthy. And I want you to know that that's not what this is. Okay. I have struggled with weight and with food and food addictions and um, stress eating and all that kind of stuff. Since I was a kid, I lost a hundred pounds doing calorie counting diets. And I'll show you a, a little bit more about that in a second. Uh, and I still struggle with food. I'm a lot different than I used to be though. My nutrition is way better and I think about food differently. That doesn't mean that I don't struggle though. So I want you to know that I'm not the guy who has everything figured out and just is like, look, all you gotta do is do this. I understand the struggles of weight and body image and nutrition and all that stuff that's really hard. I understand all that stuff because I live it every day just like you do. So I want to show you some of that stuff so that you believe me. So I'm going to share my screen with you and hopefully you guys can see this. <clears throat> so what you should see on the screen there is uh, a picture of me down in the lower right corner when I was in Little League. You can see um, probably if you looked at all the kids there, I'm the most overweight one of all the kids. I don't think I really knew that at the time. Um, I thought the two kids behind me who are twins uh, were the more overweight kids. But now that I look back at this picture, uh, it turns out I probably was. My brother is on the top row, second in from the left, and then my dad is actually the, the coach on the left. So, you know, I grew up overweight. I mean, I was always overweight. I shopped in the Husky section, and I'll tell you, my nutrition when I was a kid, maybe some of you can relate to this, but I'm one of six kids. That's my older brother in the picture, and then I had four younger siblings. And so my mom had six kids. Um, her parents didn't really, you know, cook a whole lot. They had maybe like two recipes that they made a lot of stuff from boxes and things like that. Um, we lived in the South, I lived in uh, Florida, a lot of fried food, comfort foods, things like that. <clears throat> and um, my nutrition growing up was essentially a lot of Costco corn dogs that I could make myself because my mom had six kids and so she needed things that the older kids could just make for themselves for lunch. You know, um, I ate Pop-Tarts for breakfast 
I ate pizza bagel bites from Costco, lots of Costco foods, right? Things that I could throw in the toaster oven, things I could throw in the toaster, things I can make for myself. We ate a lot of things like hamburger helper, rice aroni, uh, you know, things out of boxes that you could just buy them, buy a pound of ground uh, beef and grab the box and you were good to go. And the instructions were on the box. And by the time I was 10 or 11, I could make that kind of stuff. I could make Kraft macaroni and cheese, all that kind of stuff. So my nutrition was boxed food most of the time. And maybe some of you can relate to that. And then we had pizza night, which was delivery pizza or, um, or frozen pizza or something like that about once a week. Um, our vegetables came from maybe, um, bags of salad, you know, that had the dressing all mixed in. Um, and that was probably not even that common. And that's how I grew up. How many of you can relate to that? Like there's probably a lot of people watching this right now, either on our recording or live in the Facebook group that are like, yeah, I can relate to that. I know exactly what you're talking about, right? So that's how I grew up. Um, as I grew up, I wanted to lose weight because I knew I was a little overweight. And, um, you know, whether it was from people telling me that or I just kind of knew. And so I probably lost 25 to 30 pounds three or four different times before I was even out of high school. And the way I would do it is I would do a 1,200 calorie diet. When I was 12 years old, I was eating a 1200 calorie diet and eating things like Taco Bell. And I would go to Taco Bell, ask for the nutritional information so that I could keep my calories under 1200. I would count to 1200 calories and make sure I stayed under it at 12 years old. I don't know about you guys, but I don't think that 12 year olds should have to count calories. I really don't think that that's, you know, the right way to do things. Um, and I was, I was eating processed food, but counting calories. And so I would often be hungry. And I would hate it, but I would say to myself, this is how dieting is, and this is just what you have to do to diet. By the time I was in college, um, you know, I, I went up, down, up, down, up, down. By the time I finished college uh, with a mechanical engineering degree, there was lots of stress that last year, finishing up the, the degree and everything, I was 265 pounds. This is a picture of me at the end of college. I gained another... 10 pounds or so once I got a job and uh, had money. <laughs> and that's when, uh, once I got the job, I decided it was time to lose the weight and I really needed to do something. So I got into a weight loss contest with a buddy at work and I went back to my old faithful, which was a 1500 calorie diet now because I was older and I figured 1500 would work. And I did 1500 calories for almost a year while working out 60 to 90 minutes a day and I lost a hundred pounds. Um, I think this next picture yeah, is me at my wedding with my beautiful wife. And I think I probably lost about 80 pounds at that point from that last picture. Um, I was under 200 somewhere. Uh, yeah, like 195. So like 75, 80 pounds I had lost. Um, and I did this all with 1500 calorie diets, but my typical nutrition was things like lean cuisines because they were lower calorie. Um, I'd have hundred calorie M&M packs for a treat. I'd drink gobs and gobs of diet soda. Uh, and then I would save calories for things like ice cream at the end of the day. So I'd eat less all day, come home, have a bowl of ice cream because I wanted ice cream. Um, but as long as I stayed under 1500 calories, that, that was, that was what I did. And the problem was, is I was always hungry. I always, uh, you know, it was miserable, right? The entire year was miserable as far as going to bed hungry, always feeling deprived, hating dieting. But to me, that's just what dieting was. I mean, like, and I think maybe there's some people watching this that are like, well, yeah, isn't that how dieting works? Like you just eat less, right? And then you lose weight. And the truth is that can work. And obviously it did work for me, but it's miserable and it sucks. And here's the thing. It doesn't actually have to be that way. Okay. So this is, this, there's some uh, comparison pictures here. You can kind of see the difference. Um, this is me and my dad actually in this picture. But here's what happened to me, okay? I realized that I couldn't, um, I had this turning point where I started training for triathlons, I started training for marathons and stuff like that. And the 1500 calorie thing just wouldn't work for me anymore. So I wanted to do all these races. I wanted to, you know, have more activity. But if I ate more than 1500 calories, I'd start to gain weight eating lean cuisines and M&Ms and diet soda and all this stuff. So I'd try to go back to 1500 calories, but then I didn't have the energy to do the things that I wanted to do because I was only eating 1500 calories. And I was like, man, this sucks. I hate this. What the heck, you know? 
And I had this turning point where a, a guy posted something on Facebook. He said, why don't you stop counting calories and start counting ingredients instead and see what happens? And I was like, what is this guy talking about? Here's what he said in his post. He said, here is a typical day for someone who's on a calorie counting diet. For breakfast, they're going to have something like a smart start cereal. It's high in protein, high in fiber and whole grains. It's got all this stuff on the front of the box. It's like, this is healthy for you, right? You're going to have that for breakfast. And then for a snack, you're going to have wheat thins in the middle of the day because that's low fat and that should be good for you. And it's not too many calories. And then for lunch, you're probably going to have something like a lean cuisine because that's low calorie, right? And it even says lean in the title. And I was like, oh yeah, that's what I would do. You know, that's how I've been dieting for, for years. He said, okay, now take a look at the ingredients in those three items. The top uh, paragraph is the Smart Start cereal. The middle paragraph is the wheat thins. And the bottom paragraph is the lean cuisine. He's like, man, there's 130 plus ingredients in just those three items that you ate by lunch. 130 ingredients. Look at all the brackets and everything. And I was like, okay, well, so what? Does that make a difference, right? He says, now watch what I'm going to do. I'm going to take whole grain oats and some honey, and that's gonna be your breakfast instead of the, the cereal. So you're gonna have basically oatmeal and honey for breakfast. For a snack, you're gonna have blueberries, right? For lunch, you're gonna have roasted chicken, some brown rice, some green beans, and some butter, okay? Those things come out almost exactly the same calories, almost exactly the same grams of fat, almost exactly the same carbs, same protein all the macronutrients, fat, carbs, protein, calories are almost exactly the same, but we got there with seven ingredients in his meal, 130 ingredients in the processed food. And I was like, holy crap, that, does that really make a difference, right? So I did an experiment in the summer of 2010 for 45 days. I limited my ingredients, but not my calories. Just my ingredients were limited. I still tracked my calories just to see what they were, but I didn't limit them. I just ate until I was comfortably full, not over, you know, not like stuffing myself, but comfortably full. And I tried to eat things that had lower number of ingredients. So like a salad dressing that had a ton of ingredients in it, I wouldn't do that. I do oil and vinegar because it's two ingredients basically, right? My average intake was 2,300 calories, 800 more than a normal diet day for me, 1,500 calorie diet, and I lost 15 pounds in 45 days. And what's interesting is my fat intake went way, way up, right? Because like an avocado has so many calories in it, I would never eat that on a 1,500 calorie diet because you get like two spoonfuls and it'd be like, holy crap, I blew my whole day of calories. But on this diet, I could eat that and I didn't have to worry about it. It was one ingredient, avocado right? So I ate that. My fat intake went up, but my fat went down. I lost 15 pounds. I was like, holy crap, this is amazing. So what I learned from that is that the nutrition facts area on, a, uh, on, on the label is not where the most important stuff is. It's not that that part doesn't have any good information in it, but it's not, everybody looks at how much fat does it have? How many carbs does it have? How much protein does it have? How many calories does it have? And they forget to look at the ingredients area. Look at this Jif creamy peanut butter, okay? Ingredients, roasted peanuts, sugar, molasses, hydrogenated vegetable oils. By the way, hydrogenated is, uh, means trans fat, if you've ever heard of trans fat, right? So this has trans fat in it. Mono and diglycerides, not even sure what that is, right? Okay, now take a look at... Adam's 100% natural creamy peanut butter. Almost the same nutrition facts as calories, fat, grams, all that stuff, but the ingredients are peanuts and salt, and that's it, right? And so if you just looked at the nutrition facts, if you just looked at calories, fat, carbs, protein, you would say that these two things are basically the same, but they're not the same, right? Because the ingredients are different. And so let me give you a really good example this is your quiz okay this is the part that's going to blow your mind so this is your quiz i want you to actually answer in the comments if you're watching this okay if you can um i want you to answer which one of these two items do you think is healthier so i've got two nutrition facts labels up here okay you can look at calories fat carbs protein on, all, on both of these things and i'm going to give you about 30 seconds here and i want you to answer which one of these two things would you pick if i said pick the healthier item so I'm just going to wait for about 30 seconds. I'm going to drink my tea here. 
we need like the Jeopardy music or something like that. Do, 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 do. Pick your item left or right. You can say left or right. So if you pick the left item, 87 calories, five grams of fat, nine grams of carbs. It's got 1.7 grams of protein. On the right, 65 calories, no fat, uh, 17 grams of carbs, no protein. Which one are you going to pick? Which one are you going to pick? Okay, so hopefully you got your answers in. I'm going to reveal now. The one on the right is an apple. Okay, so uh, the ingredients in that are apple. <laughs> That's it, right? Um, so a lot of people would look at the sugars, 13 grams of sugar, or the carbs, 17 grams of carbs. They'd see no protein. They'd see, you know, 65 calories. They'd say, oh, this is not a healthy item. I'm not going to eat 17 grams of carbs and 13 grams of sugar, right? Well, that's a little deceiving because the sugars in an apple are natural sugars. It's fructose that grows in an apple. It's not like somebody, you know, cut a little hole in the apple and poured white sugar into it. It's part of the apple and it's just an apple, right? An apple a day keeps the doctor away. Now that may not be, you know, 100% true. Like if you just eat an apple a day, you won't have to go to the doctor. But it's said that way because it's good for you because apple is good for you, right? So do you want to know what the left one is? It's a Reese's peanut butter cup. One Reese's peanut butter cup. Ingredients, milk, chocolate, sugar. That's the kind of sugar that is added, like white sugar added. Cocoa butter, chocolate, non-fat milk, milk fat, lactose, soy lecithin, which is an emulsifier. PGPR, I'm not even sure what that is. Peanuts, more sugar. Dextrose, which is also sugar, another name for sugar and TBHQ, which is a preservative. So whenever I do this little quiz, probably at least half of the people pick this thing. And the reason they pick it is because it has less sugar grams, has less carb grams, it has some protein in it. And fat has kind of, you know, used to be made the bad guy. Most people are getting over that and saying, okay, fat's not what makes you fat, right? So most people go, oh, fat, okay, whatever, but it's got carbs and it's got sugar and it's got you know, no protein, but this one has less carbs, less sugar, more protein. So this must be the healthier one. But I don't think anybody after seeing it would say that a Reese's peanut butter cup is healthier than an apple. Okay. So that's my little quiz to show you how important ingredients actually are. And our whole program, our whole system is based on ingredients. I'm going to stop this screen share and just talk to you straight. Okay. So the whole program is based on ingredients. You have to look at the ingredients list of the items that you're getting. And even better, get items that don't have an ingredients list. An apple doesn't have a label with an ingredients list because it's just an apple. Chicken, no ingredients list. It's chicken, right? So those are the kind of things we go for. That doesn't mean you can't buy things that have ingredients lists. We just have to look at the ingredients list. We test them against our tiers, and then we make a decision based on that instead of fat, carbs, protein, and calories, okay? That's how the system works. Now, this afternoon, I'm going to go live again, and I'm going to talk about our tiers, and the 90, and the 10, and the 100% green, and the test mode, and the whole system, and talk really more about how you do this thing. But I just wanted you to understand how important ingredients actually are this morning, okay? So remember, we're just learning. You don't have to take this video and say, okay, I know everything about how everything works, and now I can do it. It's just the first video, okay? This afternoon, we'll go a little bit further.